Good evening, uh, friends. We're uh, coming to the end of that great golden chain of salvation that we've been reflecting on in these uh, last few meditations. Uh, in Romans 8 verse 29, the Apostle Paul begins this chain uh, and he ends in verse 30. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Now, what a wonderful uh, series of moments the Apostle Paul is unfolding for us here. And he begins in eternity with God setting his love upon those who are undeserving, all equally guilty, and yet God sets his love on some, and he predestines them to not experience his righteous judgment against their sin, but to receive his mercy and to be brought into relationship with his son. And then in time we see how God comes and he calls them through the preaching of the gospel, but especially then in the preaching the, the Holy Spirit comes to those whom God has foreloved and predestined and he works in their hearts the faith to respond to Christ offered in the gospel. And then we are told they are justified. They are already declared by the judge of all the earth to be not guilty. Now we would expect Paul to go in our understanding to something like sanctification. They are now being made holy. Now, he doesn't go there. He goes to glorify. Now, does it mean that he excludes sanctification? The difference between justification and sanctification is important to keep in mind. In justification, God declares us to be righteous. In sanctification, God begins the process in our life to make us like Christ, to make us holy and righteous. It's a transforming of our characters. But now we've already seen when we spoke earlier about predestination and the way in which Paul talks about it here in verse 29, we predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. God is not, for a moment, justifying the guilty so that they may remain in their sin and in their sinful lifestyles. Never. Those whom he justifies, God also sanctifies. He has predestined them to be like Christ, and he will make us like Christ. And yet Paul is here not thinking of that process, but he is thinking of those moments where God's glory shines the brightest in our salvation. Beginning with his love, predestination, calling, justification, and now he goes into the future and he says, glorify. What does it mean to be glorified? It means the eradication, the destruction, the wiping away of all sin and brokenness, all the misery that sin has unleashed on this world, removed. And we are made perfect 
body and soul. We become fully what we are created to be. Remember, Paul said, uh, we saw that verse, all fall short. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Glorific glorification, to be glorified, is the opposite of that. It's where we now are without sin and therefore are living fully for the glory of God. Paul anticipates uh, that uh, reality uh, and the, the yearning for that already earlier when he talked about creation and its yearning. Then now, he says in verse 20, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. All of this world will share with God's children the freedom from sin and the bondage, suffering, misery that sin has introduced. This is what we long for. This is what's deep in the human heart when it seeks to wipe away all the effects of sin, when it seeks to eradicate or, or take out of our lives the misery that sin has brought. But we can't achieve it in this life. And notice, it's God's work. He is the one who glorifies us. Now, there's something so incredible here that it's easy to miss. But the Greek makes it emphatic. Listen to what Paul is saying. Those whom he justified, he also glorified. What tense is that? It's not present. It's not future. Will be glorified. It is past tense. He has also already glorified us. Do you see what an amazing thing Paul is saying here? One author puts it this way. This, uh, uh, this tense is amazing. It is the most daring anticipation of faith uh, that we have in the New Testament. The most daring anticipation of faith. Do you hear what we're saying? We're saying that our salvation and our future presence in God's presence in which we will be transformed fully to be like our Savior Jesus Christ is so secure, is so emphatic, that we can call it as past already. This is a prophetic past tense. Our salvation is secure in Christ. And already now you and I can be assured that we will be with Jesus when he comes again. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that wonderful? There's nothing like this. We are fully secure. The, the, uh, the poet uh, Wordsworth 
in uh, 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 one of his poems that we now sing as a great Christian hymn, See the Conqueror Mounts in Triumph, writes, You have raised our human nature on the clouds to God's right hand. There we'll sit in heavenly places, there with you in glory stand. Jesus reigns, adored by angels, man with God is now, it is on the throne. Mighty Lord, in your ascension, we by faith behold our own. Mighty Lord, in your ascension, we by faith, we by faith. Behold our own. What a statement. We will be with God forever. That's our future, glorified. And so do you see, we can look back as we stand now, as those called, as those justified. We look back and we see that our salvation was God's initiative in all eternity. And as we look forward, we can see that it will end in God's presence with him forever. Do you see the marvel of our salvation and how secure it is? These golden Links in the chain are unbreakable because it's God's work. There's nothing insecure, nothing unsure about our salvation. Praise Him, exalt Him, magnify His holy name. One of the great, great gifts of the Reformation was to restore to us the assurance that our salvation is fully from God and does not depend upon our actions that help God out. And here we see that is, that, that, that assurance is rooted in the word of God in God's work. Let us praise and magnify our God together. Let's pray. Lord, we can hardly begin to praise and glorify your name for the wonder of the salvation. We want to exalt you. We want to praise you. That you save so emphatically. And that there is nothing and no one that can break the chains of our salvation. You have foreknown us, foreloved us from all eternity. And there you have predestined us to be with you forever, to be like our older brother, like Jesus. And in time you called us and you justified us. And now we praise you that we may know that one day we will see you face to face. We have no doubts that it's coming soon so that we may glorify you forever. We love you, Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and your family tonight. Bye-bye.